D2DNY Real World HVAC Simplified and now in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use these spring type or spring clamp terminal connectors or terminal blocks again this is spring clamp spring clamp terminal connectors or terminal blocks um, how to use them properly or not to break them <laughs> you know um, most technicians whether you're a beginner or you're a veteran in the business if you're not exposed to these type of uh, terminal connectors the, 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 the spring clamp terminal connectors then you you might have some issues with that and um, I've seen a lot of times these are broken and the wires is literally just hanging loose because guys don't know how to use them these are fine by the way these are good these, these are all great um, also <clears throat> this um, chiller is multi stack okay I'm going to be showing you I'm going to be showing you what well, I'm going to be replacing this uh, low pressure transducer you see right here is the low side pressure and you're able to reach that or see that see that pressure readings on the display because it has a uh, pressure transducer connected to the low side right also you have one connected to the high side you know HP acronym for high pressure LP acronym for <clears throat> low pressure pros beginners you should know that so I'm going to be replacing this one here because apparently there's some fault or issues with it so I'm going to be replacing it and this one is terminated right here uh, it's between four five and six it's three wires typically uh, your pressure transducer will have three wires um, two of them is power usually be a uh, five volts DC and the third wire is going to be your signal out okay so that's what this video is going to be about again if you hadn't subscribed subscribe um, so you don't miss out on these 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 great videos these great contents and also also hit that notification icon uh, so every time I drop a video you don't miss out you get it right away okay so I'm gonna wait here before I move to the next scene for you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button okay I'm gonna scroll to the alarm in the meantime all right are you subscribers yet okay did you hit the not notification bell or icon do it right now all right let's get into it I'm trying to find my tool right here is crazy all right oh, I think it's jam-packed I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing a video on tools for beginners it's coming soon okay so some lights here so this this tool is not needed for this section but it's here I'm just gonna sit over there don't never mind that so what you need you need your uh, nylog or something you can use a uh, leak lock as well that thing in the blue tube here is the pressure transducer all right you can see this one is a 0 to 17.3 bars and you can see the voltage uh, it says 0 0.5 to 4.5 V and um, yeah here are the three wire connections again two is power and one is signal and uh, all right and then so you're going to need a little channel lock and you know channel locks you need two two of these because you're going to want to have something to hold back right so i'm going to use my screwdriver as a little corner right here so here's the transducer that's the low side transducer you can see this is a suction pipe oh this chiller is a is a is a heat pump chiller by the way it does heating and cooling there's a hot side to this chiller and there's a cold side to this chiller pumps out hot water and cold water that's why you got reversing valves on it these are reversing valves but here's the uh, low pressure transducer 
Okay, it's on the connected to the low connected to the low side. You see the suction pipe. And this is your compressor right here. Your discharge line is your suction line, and your transducer is connected. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the clip off. Okay, so the, the wire. Here's a clip, a wire connector. It's a little clip right here. Just pull back on this and release it. See, clips in right here. Okay, and now, now you see the reason why you need uh, two wrenches because you need two wrenches because you're gonna need one be one to unscrew it, another to hold back. This particular setup, I know there's a pin below the sensor. So if you're not sure if there's a pin below it and you're going to remove it. Make sure you recover the refrigerant. Okay. Okay, so I already have it loosed. It is loosed, so I'm going to unscrew it. And obviously, you can see there's a little bit of a leak from the Schroeder, the Schroeder valve. Schroeder valve. Doesn't matter because this will be on there. Okay. So, a little bit of nylog, and I'm going to install the new one. Stay tuned. Okay, so now I have <clears throat> the sensor connected. I have it plugged back in. And the other compressor, A, is running. As you can hear it, real world, real time, real HVAC. So it's plugged back in right now. Right, sensors plugged back in, and I have my nav vac. This gauge manifold was designed for mini split or with mini split in mind, but it's I, I love it, it's, it's rather cool. So I carry it and I use it in whatever I'm using, whatever I'm working on. Right, so I, I can just I can um, it also comes with a cool carrying case. And if you see my other videos, you're quite sure you see me using this already, it's rather dope. So, what we're going to do, we're going to be testing. Or accurate this uh, transducer is reading and we're going to use a regular gauge it could be a digital gauge or an analog analog gauge digital analog doesn't matter um, what you want to do want to do is make sure that your gauge is calibrated so you see how mine is pointing exactly to zero exactly to zero zero psi so that's calibrated that's good all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and screw this on here. All right, it's rather simple. And we know that I've tested before I before I connected the sensor here, one, one other tip, before I put this on the system, I had the wire plugged into it and make sure when it's reading atmospheric pressure, it's at zero on the display, right over there. It's reading zero, so that was tested already. So zero test, zero, zero atmospheric pressure or zero PSI test was, um, was done and, and it had passed. So again, connect the wire to the sensor of the sensor just, you know, dangling and sensing the room pressure, <laughs> atmospheric pressure, it should read zero. Like your gauges read zero before you put it onto the system. Now we are at, uh, wait a second, can I get a zoom that in? We are at, uh, looks like 110 PSI, 112, right? 112, 111, because each bar I believe is five. Okay, so let's go and see what we're doing on our display. Okay, so correction, correction, each bar is 10. This is 100 right here, 100, that's 110, 120, so we're between 120 and 130. So I'm going to say we're closer. Uh, this is when it's really good to have a digital gauge. But I'm going to say we're closer to the 120 mark. All right? So 100, 110, 120. So I'm going to say uh, 122-ish, 123. It doesn't have to be exactly. You know, if it's a few PSI off, plus or minus, that's acceptable. So let's go check that out. So we should be seeing anywhere between uh, 120 and uh, 125, right? 
Let's go check that out. Okay. So we're reading 128. So five or six PSI have a difference. That is fine. That is good. That is acceptable in my book. It's not going to be dead on accurate. It's, you know, it's going to be, you know, some amount of degree off. So we are about 100. And then also the gauges itself, you know, it could be a few points off, you know, calibration wise. So 125, 128, uh, that's acceptable. Let's go back to the gauges and double check. Yeah, so as you could see, you know, it's really, I'm gonna say we are 125. So if we're seeing 128 on our display from our transducer, 128, 125, you know, again, these are increments of 10. It's 110, 120, and we're somewhere in the middle between 120 and 130. So if we're seeing 128, that's close enough. It's a pass for me, right? It's a pass, okay? So let's move on to the next part of this video, the next part, which is going to be spring clamp terminal connectors. Look at that view. Beautiful. Okay, enough of that. Back to back to work. So as you can see, oh, look at that. We're at 125. How about that? So you guess it levels out. This thing is literally on point. Perfect toe. Perfect toe, I will say. Bravo, my friend. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and purposely disconnect one of my tr uh, transducer wire and I based on the schematic uh, 4, 5 and 6. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you and demonstrate, right? So to use these uh, uh, spring clamp terminal connectors, you're gonna need to have a screwdriver like this. This is a 1 8 or a thermostat screwdriver, as you may. Or you can use your, your test leads. And so to release the wire or to insert the wire, what you'll do, so I'm gonna go here. Stick, let me go closer, can I go closer? So I'm gonna take out number five. All right, you see that? Stick the screw, screwdriver all the way in. We have a click. And then, like magic. You can just leave it in there. Oh, what happened to my sensor? It's been disconnected. Okay, let me see if I can use my one hand and get it back in there. Bear with me, guys. Come on, I know I could do it. So I think I'm in, okay, and pull out. Let's test it, woo -hoo. that's good. And we're live. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, subscribe. Because I do upload videos on a weekly, Basis. So I'm gonna show you my my nav vac. Yo, I love this thing. It's so cool. When you go into the job site with this, right, and then you have a box like that, and the the customer said, "Hey, look like you're a doctor." <laughs> Makes you feel good. Then use your test lead, your your uh, your meter test lead, and you can stick it in there. Same difference. Should I go get my test lead? I'm gonna get my test lead. If you're still watching, you will get that part of it as well. I'm gonna give it to you guys. Come on. All right. You know what? I'm just gonna take. I'm just gonna take the whole lot. There you go. Let's go do it. Let's go give it a shot with this. This right here. And I'm gonna do the same sensor. So I'm gonna pull another, I'm gonna take a different wire out, another wire. This is for you if you're still watching. 
Mm -hmm. Same thing, you push that in till you hear the click. Oh, wait a minute, I'm pulling the same wire out. How about that? Same wire. Same wire. Let me uh, straighten it out a bit. Same wire. <laughs> same wire. Unless you get the idea, you can use your test lead as well. Your meter leads. Your multimeter lead. Push it back in. Right? So I'm still using one hand here. That's so easy it is. And test the wire connection. Look at that. Nice and tidy, huh? Woohoo! So remember, you're not going to touch here. You're not touching, you're not using this. You're not using here. This is where the wire goes. You're using this part of it. Remember, it's where you put your test lead or your screwdriver. See? I stick in. If I want if I want if I wanted to connect a wire in this slot right here, I'll stick my a bit difficult with one hand but you get you get the drift you stick your test you test your screwdriver in here or you can use your test lead and you get your wire in this connection for this connection over here right here this one here will be this part over here and that's it for this video guys